um, Mr. President and uh, Senator Warner and Vice Chief of Naval Operations, Michelle. Um, so great to see all of you here tonight. Michelle Howard has been inspiring me for some time now with the plans to the Navy and what we're doing. We had a number of contacts. Uh, I'm extremely, uh, needless to say, I'm extremely, and also many, many friends here tonight. Uh, so many of you I've known for many, many years. Uh, but one thing in everyone here in this room has in common and uh, is uh, the great patriotism and service to our country. I, mean, I think it's absolutely wonderful that our country, which I think is in a, uh, losing some of its momentum in the, over the last 50, 60 years, the last five or six or 10 years, uh, has so many great Americans. Uh, it's a large percentage of them are here tonight. And uh, I can attest to that because I, I know pretty much what each of you have done for our great country. Uh, it's, of course, a great honor to receive an award like this. Uh, Arlie Burke and Tom Moore, and Jimmy Holloway, and I met in my office, uh, I think in 1977, and worked up the idea of the Navy Memorial. It was missing. We went before the Pennsylvania Avenue Commission to get approval. They said, sure, we'll give you, get, give you that if you've got space on Pennsylvania Avenue. I said, that's what we do, uh, pretty much. I want to, I want to be, uh, build a band shell with a roof over it because the heat and what have you, uh, warp sand and musical instruments. Carter Brown, the head of the Pennsylvania Avenue Association, said at the time, no, you can't do that. Uh, too many homeless would show up there at night. And so, so that's the reason why it's open. And, uh, and a couple, on a couple of them, or several occasions, we've had to cancel halfway through the band concert uh, to protect the, in uh, the instruments. Uh, you may have picked the wrong person for this award tonight. John pointed out a, a, a little incident at sea, but there's, a, there's, a, there's something that you don't know, and I didn't put in the book because I'm, I don't, uh, everybody likes to protect his own reputation. Uh, but bringing, I was in, they put me in charge, they thought I knew something because I'd gone to Harvard. Uh, and they put, they put me in charge of navigation for a fleet of 11 ships coming back from China. And we came down the Wangpu and went over to Saipan. Of course, we were quarantined for seven days because too many uh, of our sailors, and a sailor after six or nine months at sea becomes an animal uh, uh, sometimes. <laughs> and uh, so we had to, uh, we had the doctors come aboard and quarantine us. Uh, uh, because of so many big, large blisters, yellow blisters on their chests. I never knew what caused that. Uh, but Shanghai was a wide open city and women, the mothers would come aboard, come up in their, their sampans and uh, hold their little 12 year old daughter up to me and standing on the deck and they'd say, uh, hey, Yankee sailor, want a cheap F? Uh, and and uh, 25 cents. And I said, get the hell out of here, and I pushed the sampan away. And kind of, I know I was hurting commercial interests there, but I'm, I believe in the private sector. <laughs> but uh, coming back, uh, I, I, today we don't have sextants training, but now Ted Carter at the Naval Academy has reunited, uh, 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 brought it back, and Mercator tables and what have you. That's what we used in those days. And I was pretty good at it. Uh, so they said, oh, we'll trust you. And we, so we, the 11 ships were following me, 10 ships were following me. Uh, and uh, so I was looking for Wake Island. Uh, I, I knew I'd hit it right on the button. But uh, about 20 miles out, I threw, put the section away. And because and, I was looking for those tall mountains, I'm sure, I'm sure Wake Island had. And, uh, and I said, we'll see it by sight. And of course, I went 20 miles beyond it. <laughs> and I had to take a, a U-turn when I got the section back on. And it turned out that Wake Island is 
flattered and smoke. <laughs> so, but the, that's the reason why you may have given me the medal erroneously. Um, <laughs> the uh, signal flags of the 10 following ships uh, were un unmentionable in <laughs> private company. But to summarize, it went something like this. Middendorf, you're the dumbest shit we know. <laughs> but I lived in Greenwich uh, when I was running a, a, a large firm and, that I'd started in Wall Street. And Fran Tarkington uh, told me that uh, uh, who's a football player, a wonderful one, Hall of Fame. And um, uh, he was my neighbor, and he said that uh, the only way you can ever reach success is through failure. Meaning, uh, obviously, uh, you have to pick yourself up and come back, and, and if you don't have the character to do that, or energy, uh, you'll, you won't be a success. So that was always, always stuck in my mind. And uh, I tried uh, Yogi Berra, Berra uh, it turned out uh, it was on an LCS also in the Atlantic Theater, as was uh, John Lehman's uh, father, I believe. Right, John? Uh, he was on an LCS, and, uh, and I think uh, uh, there were a number of others that served on LCS. There were about 110 of them built down in Maryland in the Chesapeake Bay, pretty much. Uh, six feet to six feet below the water line and 60 feet above, so the metrocentric height was not ideal, of course. Uh, so, but they were only built for the invasion of Japan, basically, and, this, and the radar picket duty off Okinawa and Iwo. Uh, and uh, were, so we lost a number of them uh, on radar picket duty and, and uh, uh, the boys, before I got aboard, of course, uh, the boys had shot down nine kamikazes on that radar picket duty off off Okinawa, a wonderful job, what a great crew it was. Uh, and uh, uh, I, I had a, uh, that was really sort of a, almost a highlight of my life until I got, came back as a Buddha, former boot ensign and Lieutenant JG, arrived in the Pentagon. And before, when I was in the Navy during the 72 years ago in the war or what have you, I never saw anything above the rank of Lieutenant Commander, I didn't think there were any admirals in the Navy. And when I got into the Pentagon, and John Warner welcomed me aboard, and all of a sudden, all I saw were admirals. And I asked John, I said, is, is there anybody in the Navy other than admirals? <laughs> so, uh, it, it would quote Yogi Berra, uh, he, he said, the future isn't what it you, what it's used to be. And of course, and of course, he's more famous for, if you come to a fork in the road, take it. Um, but uh, so, uh, someone told me tonight that he probably didn't write all those or speak all those wonderful phrases that have made him so famous. But a uh, wonderful person, his passing is very, very sad, of course, uh, to all of us, although I'm a Red Sox fan and not a Yankee fan. <laughs> uh, uh, I'd also like to pay tribute to uh, the giants that I served with uh, in the Navy Department, and uh, I really felt it was a highlight for me to know uh, Jimmy Holloway and John Warner to work with those giants. John went on to the Senate and headed the Armed Services Committee and did so much to help the Navy build up its weapon systems to so we could prevent the peak of the Cold War and we could uh, save our country. Uh, and uh, PX Kelly, uh, have, uh, PX Kelly and Lou Wilson, uh, can I have those plaques? I just want to, uh, Bill Chatfield's going to bring them up. I, I just want to point out that uh, PX Kelly prided himself on being quite a good athlete. Uh, and one night at the officers club in Rome, he and 20 fit Marines said to me, Middendorf, you, you apparently are a national rowing champion uh, we'd like to take you on a three-mile race on the Tiber River tomorrow morning, and, but you just pick the time. Of course, I checked out the tidal currents and uh, found, found out that uh, 
uh, the, uh, the riptide was 17 knots at, <laughs> at 6.54 in the morning. And uh, I didn't tell PX, so we started off at 6.55, <laughs> and I took two strokes, and I was three miles down the river <laughs> under, under Hedrian's tomb. <laughs> Six, six long minutes later, PX Kelly and uh, the 25th Marines came, came down and came across the bridge, and PX said uh, to the 25th Marines, he looked around, he said, we beat that shit, Middendorf. And, <laughs> and, and then I said, I, I, I was under the bridge in my single skull, and I said, the hell you did, I've been here for six minutes. <laughs> and then, so it was written up in stars and stripes, uh, and went all over Europe and America. And, uh, but I have to say, PX Kelly uh, has redeemed himself uh, since then uh, by being such a close friend. And he's a, just a wonderful, wonderful guy. And so, so sad that he couldn't be here tonight, but he was at the change of command cer uh, ceremony this morning. I mentioned Lou Wilson. Uh, I ran eight marathons, uh, thanks to Rick Nellis and encouraging me to become active with the Marine Corps Marathon, which I helped found with uh, Jim Fowler, and uh, Lou Wilson signed this certificate saying that I have completed the, this is one of the marathons in 1978 when I ran with Jim Fowler, uh, and I finished 3,976 out of 5,833. <laughs> <laughs> Bill, let's do this. Uh, so, Again, I, you may have picked the wrong man. <laughs> I did want to say one thing, and of course, Tom Moore and Arlie Burke are other giants that I work with. And, and I, but I did want to say one thing, and I've talked this over with uh, um, many people in the Navy, including the Chief of Naval Operations and a number of others. Our hands are a bit tied now with a sequester in the Navy. We are facing the greatest threat this nation's ever fa faced. Mao always said, uh, if you push a knife into butter, and uh, keep pushing. But if you push a knife into st steel, pull back. And I think that uh, with this cyber war, I attended a two-day conference at the Naval War College this uh, day before yesterday and today. Yesterday. Um, it turns out that China and Russia are extremely active. We knew that, of course and downloading some of our top secrets. And intellectual property rights, too. And uh, Russia's even more advanced than China on the military side. Uh, China is very advanced on the intellectual side. But this is very ominous, because the next war will be the Navy's war. Uh, it'll be fought in space. It'll be fought in the submarine, the submarine forces. And it'll be fought in cyber. Uh, the MP threat, the uh, any satellite campaign, the ICBMs, the new Jin class, Chinese submarine is a great threat, the, the uh, S-500 missile that the Russians are building and selling uh, the 300 missile to Iran. Uh, we, uh, we face a very ominous threat that we're, for the first time in our, our lives. John talked about, John Warner talked about the threat that John and the rest of us had to face uh, during the Cold War uh, with 600, uh, several hundred miles off the coast those Soviet ships, the submarines. This will be much more serious because the, the Chinese have, have developed a, a long-range ICBM capable of being launched from the submarines since they can stand off quite a, quite a distance and they're building them very fast. We won't even start to remodel the Trident uh, in, uh, program until uh, BCNO is it 2020, I think. And uh, this, to me, is serious. Uh, and then only one a year. Uh, we, I think uh, the sequester has done tremendous damage to the Navy. And uh, we're not really uh, get building the ships for the long lead time. It's a 10-year lead time to build any weapon system, basically, uh, in my opinion, from my experience, uh, when we built the Tridents and the Aegis systems and the F-18s. Uh, I, we have to start now if we're going to match the great nightfall potential 10 years from now. So that's, uh, I think, uh, and I've talked to a number of really s smart analysts about this uh, and others uh, in, in the Navy and Defense Department, 
uh, in the War College, where I'm very active. And we, we, are, we are very concerned that, uh, that we're not building our capabilities as fast as we should. Uh, and uh, we thank God we've got great leadership in the Navy, the Marine Corps, uh, trying to bridge the gap. But uh, it's, uh, we're facing a much more serious threat, to my mind, because of the capabilities of the Chinese and Russians, uh, potentially in 10 years from now. So thank you very much for this tremendous honor. And I, I, God bless all you great men and women served in our military. Bill, this way. We'll get you off this chair. Oh, yeah.